2016, the information space exploded. It seemed like China was starting a project that would become one of the most complex and at the same time, one of the most useful things the PRC has ever managed to implement on its territory. This time, the construction had to be done underwater, on the water, and above it. The only thing left was to send workers to build underground, on land, and above it to cover all possible challenges. But even without that, there was already a bunch of incredibly tricky problems that needed solving. But does anyone doubt that the Chinese can overcome anything? Millions of tons of materials ended up in the water, and thousands of workers toiled away in the heat using specially designed equipment for the project. The result is a whole system, with each part setting some kind of construction record after it was completed, allowing one of China's key regions to keep developing at an incredible pace. Want the details? Well, that's exactly what we're here for today. The project started to come to life between two cities in southern China. Shenzhen and Jiamen. If you're wondering whether these two cities really need such an expensive project, well, first of all, this is China, where billion dollar mega projects are the norm. And second, how else could you improve the conditions in cities that are top players in China's economy? Shenzhen is a prefecture level city, and its importance is clear just by looking at its GDP ranking. First is Shanghai, China's most developed city. Second is the capital. Beijing, that's pretty clear. And third is Shenzhen. As of 2022, its GDP reached over 3 trillion yuan or $482 billion. That's more than, for example, Malaysia, Vietnam, or Denmark. In fact, it's almost the same as the entire UAE. The importance of Shenzhen can also be highlighted by the fact that it's in the top 10 cities with the largest economies in the world. It ranks eighth in terms of competitiveness and is the largest financial center globally. Also, it takes sixth place in terms of the number of billionaires. According to the Huruan Research Institute's top list, there are 84 billionaires in the city. It also has a bunch of other interesting advantages, like being second in the world for the number of skyscrapers, 19 for the number of research institutions, and so on. The media even call Shenzhen China's Silicon Valley. In short, Shenzhen is an alpha city. And no, we didn't just make that up. Based on all its achievements, the city is considered one by the British Analytical Center, Globalization, and World Cities Research Network. And just imagine, less than 100 years ago, this was just a small fishing village, and now it's one of the largest megacities. Well, let's leave it at that, because listing all of Shenzhen's strengths and records would take a 20-minute video of its own. So, now that we got Shenzhen covered, what about its neighbor, Jiamen? It's one of the few Chinese cities named after a person. It was originally called Xiangshan, and in 1925, it was renamed in honor of Sun Yat-sen, known as China's Sun Zhongshan. This city doesn't appear in the top rankings all that often, and with its 3.1 million people, it's eclipsed by its neighbor, which is nearly 13.5 million residents. Its GDP isn't as large as Shenzhen's, only about $50 billion. However, the Chinese government is actively working to turn the city into another tech hub of the country. The city is advancing its industry and establishing national-level research centers. Moreover, it has the Zhongshan National Torch High-Tech Industrial Development Zone, which, as of 2021, attracted 430 foreign invested enterprises including 20 from the Fortune 500 list. For example, Canon and Casio have operations there. Also, Jiangmen is home to one of China's largest seaports, which mainly handles bulk cargo and containers. In short, the city is attractive both to foreigners and locals, particularly those from the neighboring Xinjiang. It's clear that these two cities are closely connected. Goods need to travel from one city to the other. Some people live in Xinjiang but work in Zhongshan, or vice versa. But there's one problem with all these movements, the Pearl River, which makes it impossible to simply drive directly from one city to the other. As obvious as it may seem, the problem is not only recognized by us. There have been bridges connecting the two cities for a long time, with the most convenient one being the Human Bridge, as it literally connects the two cities. It was built back in 1997, yet the past century didn't stop it from setting records. For example, 
Its main span stretches 2,900 feet. At the time, it was considered the longest in China. Some of the less impressive features include the bridge's total length of 11,900 feet, a structure made up of five large concrete sections, and the deck, which was specially designed to withstand winds of up to 200 feet per second. This kind of wind isn't uncommon here, so the solution was very useful. By the way, it's worth noting the Human was generally the first large suspension bridge to be designed and built entirely by China itself. You could say that this bridge marked the start of China's renowned bridge-building era. However, at some point, the bridge just wasn't enough. The cities were growing quickly, along with China, which made a massive leap from the late 90s to the present day. This led to an increase in the population. When the bridge was built in 1997, Shenzhen had only 3.5 million residents. Now, as we mentioned earlier, the city has 13.5 million people. So, the population has increased by 10 million. Meanwhile, in Zhongshan, the population grew from 945,000 to almost 3.1 million. And this is just in the cities. There are so many small settlements nearby with populations that aren't even accounted for in the official figures. You see where we're going with this. The bridge, which was built for a certain number of residents with a small margin for the future, clearly wasn't meant for such a huge population. And as the population grew, so did the number of businesses, stores, and everything else that requires cargo transportation between the cities. Moreover, the trip from Jiangmen to Shenzhen had recently been taking about two hours. Doesn't sound too long, right? For the Chinese, that's long. Which is why in 2016, cargo ships started appearing on the Pearl River again, carrying construction materials, rebar, and everything else needed for the implementation of a new Chinese mega project. This project, worth nearly $5 billion, required islands. Unfortunately, there were none in the needed spot on the Pearl River. So, the builders began implementing a strategy perfected over the years and used for the Hong Kong airport the construction of two artificial patches of land. The Shenzhen Zhongshan Mega Project stands as a testament to China's engineering prowess and ambition. The new infrastructure has significantly improved the connectivity between the two economic powerhouses, fostering more efficient trade, business operations, and daily commutes. With an average of 100,000 vehicles utilizing the route daily, the impact is evident in reduced congestion, enhanced logistics, and a boost to the regional economy. This project also demonstrates China's commitment to technological advancements in construction, with innovations such as underwater 3D printing, automated tunnel monitoring, and smart lighting systems. The underwater tunnel and record-breaking bridge not only provide a faster route, but also showcase China's ability to solve complex engineering challenges. While the initial excitement led to traffic surges, the long-term benefits are clear. The new route has alleviated pressure on existing crossings, such as the Human Bridge, while also encouraging more travel between Shenzhen and Zhongshan. This increased movement has spurred economic growth, reinforcing the region's status as one of the most dynamic and developed in the world. Ultimately, this $5 billion project over eight years is not just about connectivity. It is a symbol of China's forward-thinking approach to urban development. With ongoing advancements and future megaprojects on the horizon, the country continues to push the boundaries of what's possible in infrastructure and engineering. Beyond the immediate economic and logistical benefits, the Xinjin Zhongshan megaproject plays a crucial role in the long-term vision for the Greater Bay Area. As China seeks to integrate its key cities, Shenzhen, Guangzhou, Hong Kong, and Macau, into a unified economic hub, infrastructure projects like this are essential in reducing travel barriers and fostering regional collaboration. Moreover, environmental considerations have been a key aspect of the project. Engineers have implemented eco-friendly construction practices, such as using low-emission materials and minimizing disruptions to marine ecosystems. The tunnel's advanced ventilation system reduces carbon emissions, making the project a model for sustainable infrastructure development. Experts predict that the improved connectivity will lead to a surge in foreign investments as international businesses seek to capitalize on the streamlined logistics and expanded workforce accessibility.
The real estate sector has already seen a boom, with rising property values and increased demand for commercial and residential spaces along the corridor. Despite its massive success, the project also brings challenges. Urban planners must now address potential overdevelopment and ensure that the benefits of the new infrastructure are distributed equitably. Additionally, traffic management systems will need continuous upgrades to accommodate the rising number of commuters. Looking ahead, China's ambitions in mega engineering remain boundless. With ongoing plans for Hyperloop transport, smart cities, and AI-driven traffic control, the country is set to redefine the future of urban connectivity. The Xinjiangshan Mega Project is just the beginning of a new era of groundbreaking infrastructure, and its impact will be felt for decades to come. What do you think about this transformation? Let us know in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe to Digital Discoveries for more insights into the world's most fascinating engineering feats.